Through God's ear, there's nothing small about your business, your passion, your hours, your reputation. It's all huge. Your partnerships, even bigger. With Dell Small Business Technology Advisors, you'll get the tech, advice, and one-on-one partnership to help your business grow. Because with reliable Dell PCs with Intel Core processors, you can focus on what matters most, getting business done. Call 877-BY-DELL to speak with an advisor today. That's 877-BY-DELL. Listen up, people. We have a big favor to ask, and we promise it won't take up too much of your time. You know, our show is supported by some fantastic sponsors, right? Well, we'd love to hear your feedback. Head to ESPNPodcastStudy.com and fill out a short, anonymous survey. That's it. We swear again. That's ESPNPodcastStudy.com. This is the Dan Lebator Show with the Stugatz Podcast. For those of you not familiar with what Tuesdays are around here, I will explain it one time. Greg Cody and Stugatz are the rodeo clowns. They are undefeated, never lost. And I'm sitting here in another version, another Tuesday. I've never won on any of these Tuesdays. The rodeo clown, I'm the journalism bull trying to do work. And the rodeo clowns always win. (laughs) But I want to explain to people what it is that I'm experiencing right now as I'm preparing to try and get this lumbering behemoth of a ship off the ground and into the sky today. (laughs) Because it's hard to talk about sports right now. You got the World Cup, but many of you don't want, you don't want soccer analysis here, even though Mike can give it to you and give it to you very well. I don't think that's what you want here. And so we've got games going on, but those are the games people care about, but there's no good way to do them on the radio. So I'm sitting here and I'm trying to take notes, trying to figure out what the hell are we going to do for the next three hours of trying to make this jalopy get into the sky. And as I'm doing this, this is the bombardment I get from my left side from Stugatz while a bombardment is coming from my right side <laughs> with Greg Cody. <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to consume the details on this Kellen Winslow story as this is what I'm getting. Stugatz is waving a shoe at me saying, Dan, I'm telling you, I'm gelling. It's been life changing. It's been life changing. I used to mock it, but now I put it in my shoes. I'm gelling. And this is what he's yelling at me. I used to laugh at Dr. Scholes, by the way. I no longer laugh at Dr. Scholes. I, it is life-changing. Okay. Life-changing. Right, so I used to laugh at this product. Now I've tried this product. It is a life-changing product. As this happens, Allison bursts into the room, screams, Oh, Landon Donovan. Landon Donovan canceled on us. And Stugatz yells, Bleep him. He's a traitor. Oh. And then he goes back to waving his shoe at me. Yeah. And yep. then he yells at me, Preston Wilson, 141 RBI. Yeah. Jalen, I can't get my eyes off the Preston Wilson season. I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand how it happened. I really don't. I mean, the guy had 141 RBIs and finished 16th in the MVP voting. Wow. Can we go back to that season? Is that, <laughs> I want, I want, I want, to enjoy how is that, that possible? Hold on. I want to go back to the scene of the crime because I do not believe that we can do this enough as steroids <laughs> completely mutated baseball. Can you please tell me again? What you were just saying about Preston Wilson in that year, is that for real, that he was 16th in the MVP voting with 141 RBI? He had 141 RBIs, 36 home runs, did it for Colorado, finished 16th in the MVP voting. Barry Bonds, I think, had 90 RBIs, Bill? 90? Yeah, he had 45 home runs, 90 RBIs, but he only had 133 hits because he was walked so much. Right. Wins the MVP. Robbed it, by the way, from Pujols, who had 43 home runs, 124 RBIs, hit 359. They both robbed it from Preston Wilson. Preston was 16th. He was only two spots ahead of John Smoltz. What? And he was four spots behind Richie Sexton. Hold on. Can we go? Uh-huh. You guys long. See, you guys, we're the old people. Greg, me, and Stugat, we're the old people. You guys come from a different time in baseball. Billy, you love baseball now, but didn't you love it better then? Wasn't all of that more fun? Wasn't steroids a lot more fun than what you're watching now, which is a bunch of strikeouts 
and a bunch of home runs. No, I was a little kid and I grew up with like morals and I was like, they're cheaters. I don't like that. I remember I would scream Bayroid Bonds at Barry Bonds that season during the playoffs. Barry We'd Bonds. boo him. Boo! And there'd be people holding up signs with syringes. And then we got Sammy Sosa and then we had the cork situation. Oh, it was so much fun. They were villains. Guillermo, give me again a couple of those ah. Bond seasons in the middle of that and tell me why it is that we banished steroids right up until we now made it the voice of Sunday Night Baseball. Like, wait, I mean, steroids are wonderful. Evidently, kids don't use them. You know that. That's bad. Don't do that, kids. Be very careful and make sure that your pharmacist is actually a pharmacist as opposed to the people we have down here who are pharmacists when they're not being DJs. Barry Bonds actually didn't have too many crazy seasons. He had 2001 where he was 73 with 137 RBIs and he only <laughs> had he had 156 hits and 73 of them were home runs, which is crazy. But Absurd. other than that, I mean, his high was 49 home runs the year before. Billy had four straight seasons with an OPS of over 1,275. <laughs> Billy, like how much better was baseball back then? Nah. Boo! Boo! I mean, he was, why did we hate him? He was wonderful! Do you remember when they intentionally walked him? I think it was in Arizona with the bases loaded. They had a two-run lead, the Diamondbacks. And they intentionally walked him in the ninth inning with the bases loaded, giving up a run just so they didn't have to pitch to him. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't long for that day? Seriously. All this drug testing you're doing across sports. It was my favorite sport back then. I remember that 2003 season better oh. than I remember anything of the last decade in terms of that sport. You were reciting, you know, Preston Wilson finished 16th. I was like, check out where Juan Pierre finished because the Marlins won that deal. Yeah. Juan Pierre finished 10th in MVP. <laughs> what? Way too Get out of here. Wait a, a minute. Ahead of Mike Lowell. He was hugely important despite his noodle arm. <laughs> Wait a minute. Give me all the voting that year. Give me all those crazy numbers from that that one distorted year that you guys we're following that was making you crazy so because 2003 it, Sheffield finished third Sheffield had a year also 39 home runs 132 RBI 330 average and a 1.023 OPS mm. where was he Atlanta that year yeah he, was, yeah he was yeah, Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta how about Tome just, though how about Tome <laughs> oh, oh wow <laughs> <laughs> he finished fourth by the way fourth 47 over 131 RBIs I mean this, this season was insane this is just the NL what was happening in the AL but you're, you were so busy booing these people oh, who yeah, were making you love them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, I didn't appreciate it. Everyone was doing the same thing that Barry Bonds was doing. So it was just like, ah, this guy's cheating to do it. Surely, Jim Tomey is not. Or Albert Pujols, Gary Sheffield. Javi Lopez, how did he finish fifth? I never got why they called him Javi Lopes. Hold he had, on. He had 43 homers. Guillermo. Yes. When you were growing up. Atlanta was stacked, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Andrew Jones, man, I miss him. That guy was good. He signed an autograph for me once outside of Pro Player Stadium. I ran up to his rental car. He signed the ball for me. It was so cool because he was good then. And I remember he told, he signed for all the people, and he's like, hey, don't scratch my car with your watch. He was a lot. I remember Andrew Jones in the World Series, I think against the Yankees, and he hit two home runs, and I said to myself right then and there, this is going to be the greatest baseball player that ever lived. Oh, I was so confused at World Series as a little kid and an Andrew Jones going off, and he didn't speak English at first. It's like, how does Andrew Jones not know English? How is he? What? What is happening here? And then Andrew Jones graduates to the uh, strip club trial where he's on trial and he's having so much sex that when they ask him the names of the women that were in the courtroom that he was testifying about, he's like, I, I don't know. I don't remember any I, of I this. I don't remember. Oh, yeah. That, Wait that, a minute. No, Andrew Jones. He didn't Jones, speak English also? Andrew, yeah, the whole thing I just thing remember signing my autograph. Yeah, and, and telling you not to scratch his car. Yeah, and gold gloves. Man, he was funny. He was so good at defense. I miss good defense. Hold on. Let's let's backtrack for just a second. You realize that I was a controversial columnist at the Miami Herald saying, hey, these steroids, it's kind of great for everybody. No. Shaped Billy was there. Baroid Bond. Now look at what the sport is. Now it's so damn specialized. You can't have a guy who's got... Did you... Billy, that might be the most absurd stat I've ever heard. How many home runs... Did Barry Bonds have that one season with how many RBI? It might be the single most absurd stat I've ever heard in baseball. <laughs> this year, the one, that, the year that he won 45 homers with 98, 90 RBIs. Yeah, that's crazy, silly. <laughs> oh 
I think that nobody would, they were terrified of him. Nobody wanted to throw the ball anywhere near the batter's boxes. <laughs> so then I found out Andrew Jones is from the Caribbean. I'm like, okay, cool. I guess he speaks Spanish and they spell his name a little bit different. Then the World Baseball Classic comes around and he's playing for the Netherlands. What? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Levitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stu that's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z, equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Don Lebatard. Chris, give me other examples of your father <laughs> being self-involved in your childhood. You had me thinking earlier of things he does with my wife. My wife has been going over there for years, having dinner at his house, and he's cooking, and she hates mushrooms, and yet still, every Sunday, there are mushrooms involved with this dinner. And he's like, oh, sh- oh, she doesn't like mushrooms? Love me some mushrooms. <laughs> Stugatz. Christopher's wife, who I love, is a little finicky in the culinary area, and so it's tough to keep track of exactly right. what she well, doesn't like. Mushrooms seem pretty simple. Besides mushrooms, though? Mush- mushrooms seem pretty it? simple. I'm going to know that for the remainder of my life. Well, I'm if a big pr- shrimp fan. I love me some shrimp. She's allergic to shellfish. <laughs> uh, so she says. <laughs> she just doesn't like my shrimp. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I can't do the show with this much going on around me. Stugats is whipping his feet at me, yelling that he's gelling and that it's been life changing. <laughs> and in the middle of it, Greg Cody is talking to me about Iceland, being amazed by Icelandic uh games here that have been amazing to him mike may or may not know this in iceland the tv rating for their first match 99.6 percent yeah 99.6 percent of the population that was watching a television in iceland was watching iceland versus argentina that's impossible to get that television rating anywhere in Bra- okay. if, if brazil was in the championship match it would not be 99 okay but as he's doing this dugat mike is telling me the whole time i'm getting this from cody on my right just a furnace blast of i want to talk icelandic soccer mm-hmm. <laughs> and and it's just it the breath smells like coffee and it's very yeah, aggressive. Beautiful. You guys remember Jim Edmonds? Oh, oh. Oh. Yeah. he was somehow the greatest white athlete of his time while looking like a dad. Yeah, I did. I didn't get that because he looked like a dad. So how was he making these diving catches? Because every dad I knew couldn't do anything. All couldn't the, even run. All the commentators would sort of shade him because they knew Jim Edmonds would hold up to make catches look a little bit more spectacular. But God bless him. Yeah. Dugatz and I Oof. were talking during all of this. Good looking man. He is a good looking man. And he was just yelling about slinging munis again, Mike. <laughs> and he was saying, he was saying, hey, we got Maury knocked, uh, we got Maury locked in for next week. And I'm like, Maury? Maury? Murray! I'm like, we got Murray next week? He's like, no, Daryl Maury, the Rockets general manager. Murray! But now I got Murray on the brain, and he's got Maury on the brain, and he starts talking, he starts yelling about how, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew to call, cold call, when slinging munis, I knew to call a Murray! And I could be chummy with him, but then Stugatz was just yelling. There are certain names I knew to avoid. Avoid allergic, because it's the plague. I'm not going to get any money here. Yep, and Jimmy is one of those names. If I saw a Jimmy in the phone book, I'm never calling a Jimmy. I just skip right over the Jimmys in the phone book because here's what happens with a Jimmy. A, he's got no time for you. He's not buying anything from you. And what happens at the end of the call, you're buying stuff from Jimmy. Uh, that's what happens. All of a sudden, you're buying stuff from Jimmy. And so I just skipped over Jimmy's and I would find more Murray's, Morty's, and Abraham's. Murray! Wait a minute. Wait a wait a minute. Abraham is Abraham. You go after an Abraham. You are well, yeah. It, it, listen, if it was in the phone book as Abe, I would not go after him. But Abraham, I'm going after an Abraham. Yep. All right. Uh, definitely Morty. I so, mean. so, anyways, I just want you to know. So, I got Cody over here with Iceland, and I got Stugatz over here gelling and doing that and shouting at me that Barry Bonds once had a season where he had 73 homers and 137 RBI. <laughs> 73 homer and 137 RBI. If you said to me a guy hit 73 homers, guess how many RBIs he had? I would say like 175. 
And I realized that as because we were just celebrating this time in baseball so joyously, I realized as it was happening that this is the only topic from Greg Cody to his son who works on this show with me in between and all the people on this show. It's the only topic that all of us care deeply, weirdly about 90s baseball. One subject in the Uh. world brought us together and it was Otis Nixon. (laughs) <laughs> you guys remember how the uh, L.A. Dodgers were just running the Rookie of the Year yeah, award? Yes. If you were an L.A. Dodger rookie, you were winning the Rookie of the Year. They owned the 90s. How are they not still a dynasty that they should have built in the 90s with all these amazing players? Who were their Rookie of the Year winners? So they did from 92. So 92, they had uh, Eric Carros, 93 Piazza, 94 Mondesi. 95, Hideo Nomo, and 96, Todd Hollinsworth. A dynasty! Hideo wow. Nomo. Yeah. That wow. brings me back, A man. A decade! Hollinsworth tailed off. They really should have done more winning, to be honest really with you. They really should have. Who was Every the manager? Year. Lasorda. Oh, God. Right. Overrated. Go. Every year, they have a rookie of the year. <laughs> I mean, Lasorda, uh, he managed for a long time. His managerial record was 1,599 and 1,439. What so happened What happened a little better. to the baseball manager like Tommy Lasorda, who was foul-mouthed in private? He was terrible to people. He was a cartoon salesman in a time in mm-hmm. baseball where the manager mattered, and he was getting all sorts of endorsements to where we are now with baseball. Like, mm-hmm. can you imagine someone like that? I mean, we had him here in Miami for a minute, Ozzie Guillen, but then, you know, he said he loved Castro, and that was problematic. Ozzie, uh, oh, Castro, God. Now they're all Ozzie just... Ozzie never worked again. <laughs> what just happened? Now all MLB managers are former backup <laughs> catchers. It's just not fun, and they were playing like fun. two seasons ago. I miss Charlie Manuel. I miss Earl Weaver. Did you, uh, did you, Earl Weaver. Did you just short circuit? What just happened to you? <coughs> what just happened? I, I, my mind cast back five years to when that whole Aussie Guillen mess was happening. And uh, it was a, a ridiculous situation because his uh, praise of Aussie Guillen, quote unquote, was not really direct praise, but it was sort of construed the as The praise such. of Fidel Castro? Yeah. What did I say? <laughs> Dumb fight. <laughs> <laughs> we, we we are we are listening to the ramblings of the infirm, like right. clearly. Castro convertibles. Anybody remember that ad? What? <laughs> what? You don't remember that? You know, you know what struck me as weird that you know you had a Castro right. convertible. Mike, in South hit him Florida with a show and... killer. Like everything just died on his lap. Show we killer. We should disqualify him, like Phil Mickelson. I'm going to bring us back, Billy. Check out. Speaking of nineties baseball, this name will resonate with a lot of people. Check out the nineteen ninety six season of Todd Hunley. <laughs> oh, have some fun with that. Talk about another guy that looked you like gotta a look dad. at all the seasons around yes, Hunley did look like a dad, you're yeah. right. You gotta look at the seasons around the season that I'm talking <laughs> Go ahead, give it to us, Guillermo. Wow. So, give it to uh, us. 93, Todd Hundley had 11 home runs. 94, he had 16. 95, he had 15. 96, he had 41. <laughs> More people in sports who look like a dad. Greg Olson, I nominate him. Next. <laughs> I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. Hal Morris. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> people are just texting and tweeting in. And I think it's younger people because they have no idea that this happened the 90s. Larry Walker, 97. Holy bleep. Well, I just don't understand how it is that this is the only thing that reaches across all the generations that we have sitting in this room right now. Is that time in baseball when we cared like that? And now, I mean, you can name your local guys, but we didn't care. That sport mattered so damn much. Jeff Kent, your friend's dad that you were scared of. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's so true. Don Libertard. I get many complaints about why do you cut Cody off so much? Why don't you let him talk more? He has no governor whatsoever for what others find interesting. It's just for what he finds interesting. And what he finds interesting is himself. Stugatz. I'm interested in people. So maybe people are interested in me. That's my governor, governor. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I'm struggling today because I don't know where to go conversationally. I want to go badly toward guys in sports who look like a dad. 
<laughs> I, I, which is that entire Brave staff from the 90s. But I also love that we have stumbled upon what I believe to be the sacred, sacred common ground where all of us, no matter creeds, religions, all of us gather to slap each other on the shoulder about sports. I don't think there's another one other than 90s baseball. I don't know why it is, <laughs> but I'm saying that this connects to the audience. What we are getting inundated with by text is just a whole lot of people, nostalgic in a way that's unreasonable about Jay Buhner. Oh, Buhner. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. That guy looks yeah. so good. Yeah. Buhner, yeah. Buhner. One of the coolest scenes yeah. ever. Yeah. One of the coolest yeah. scenes ever. He looked like a dad. Like a late, bad dad. Bad dad. Yeah. Late yeah. 90s yeah. dad. Yeah. Like weekend yeah. dad. Yeah. 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 yeah, Buhner. Ooh, did he have some seasons? <laughs> I mean, Dante <laughs> Bouchette. Dante. Oh, stepdad. Uh, stepdad. Yeah. stepdad. Definitely stepdad, stepdad pulling up on a motorcycle. Oh, Funkle. Yeah. Funkle. Yeah. No, Funkle. Ellis Burke's dad. Can't forget. What? Oh, Dan Wilson. Oh, Dan the Dan one Wilson. crappy player on that team, but steady Eddie. Yeah. Oh, Eddie, yeah. And yeah. looks like a dad. Yes. How? How is this the connection point? Seriously, Stugatz, what is it about this time period? Because if you go back a little further to Oscar Gamble and funny guys, Claudel Washington, when people were growing up on Braves, and America's team, and they were learning baseball in a much different way. We were all being introduced to cable television right. at the same time. That time is too early. It's this specific wheelhouse of, like, I don't even know what it is. Is it 92 to 97? Because it's not even all of the 90s, is it? The wheelhouse is Bobby Ayala. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And Rick Aguilera. Yes. I mean, for Bichette, it was 95 to 97. So I think you're right. It's not the entire decade, but it's like 92, 97, somewhere in that range. Oscar Gamble, because of that fantastic afro of his underneath that little baseball cap, I feel like transcends eras. So no matter what area you're talking about, there's always a place for Oscar Gamble. Milton Bradley was terrifying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He really was. What a bad Carl guy. Everett. What? Carl Everett. Oh, my God. Carl Everett? Yeah, Carl Everett. Oscar Gamble introduced me on cable television to the Afro. Not even making that up. He came in running in for a fly for a fly ball, and his cap would always pop off. <laughs> 60-year-old Willie McGee always playing somehow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Look like a grandfather. The same thing happened with Claudel Washington. Played with the biggest glove I've ever seen. But it's before this era that you guys are speaking of. This is not the connection point era. This is me, hey, old timer, nobody cares. Tim Salmon rocking the California Angels oh and then the post-Disney ownership cartoonish Anaheim Angels when Jim Edmonds was diving around in center field. Yeah. Love that team. Are there any Claudels left? Or was he the last one? That Mo Vaughn contract didn't work out for the Anaheim no, Angels. No, no, no. no Claudel's no, still with us. Right. Guillermo, put on the poll. Was that the last Claudel? Yeah, you can really choke it down. Yeah. It's a, such a beautiful name. It's well, such a beautiful name. Uh, Oscar Gamble is no longer living. Just so, uh, just so you know, he's no longer with us. Well, did you know that? No. I'm just letting you know, man. The Urban Dictionary says Claudel is a wild and crazy woman. Wow. Um, is that with an e at the end? No. C L A U D E L L. I think Claudel spelled it with an E at the end. If I'm not not Claudel Washington. You guys remember the Jim Edmonds trade no. from Anaheim to St. Louis? You know what they got back? Tell Ken Bottenfield and Adam Kennedy. Get out of, and get out of, get out of here. And that was a win-win because Adam, Adam Kennedy was a pro's pro for a long time. And I think Bottenfield actually started an all-star game as a huge surprise to everybody. Bottenfield looked like a dad. Pete Claudel namings was in 1940. There were 16 babies named Claudel per million. In 1940, and then we've dropped off some slowly. 44, there was a little bit of an uptick again. 11 per million, and then a low was 1951, only two babies per million named Claudel. Then we went back up, 56, 8 per million. Then we went down a little bit. 1976, we got up to 10 per million. Oh, wow. And now nice, we're kind of at nice. a steady two babies named Claudel per million since 1987. Okay. You guys remember when the uh, the Brewers came from the AL to the oh, NL? Yeah, and because of regional yeah, yeah. television, like you finally got introduced to dad-looking Jeff Cirillo. Oh, Jeff Cirillo. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mike, you are right about those Angel teams. Those were really good teams. How did they not win more? It's, I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's hey, Jared Anderson, Jim Edmonds, and Tim Salmon with Eddie Murray as a DH. Still playing then? Eddie Murray? Yeah. And yes. dad. <laughs> well, how about this? Bartolo Colon. Bartolo Colon actually pitched to Eddie Murray. And Bartolo Colon has a secret family. Two dads. Bartolo Colon. Two dads. Wow. 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 I guess it's not yeah. a secret anymore. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's not. No. Cal Eldred. <clears throat> oh, Troy Percival. Oh, oh, man. Oh, 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 boy. Man. Oh, man. This is exciting. Huh? How about Troy Glaus? Oh, oh, oh yeah. get out of here. You get out of here. Was Tony Womack on those teams? Oh, oh Tony man. Womack. Good for 45, yeah. 50 bags a season, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember how shocking it was when Bayerga shaved? Oh, man. oh, I know where I was. Those Indians teams should have won a lot more. The no, '90s man, Indians. No, oh my God! Look at Manny, Bayerga, <laughs> Kenny Lofton was on that team. Those teams were stacked. Oh, Tommy, <laughs> Earl Hirschheiser. Big Sexy was on yeah. those teams too. Big Sexy, Richie Sexton. I don't think Sexton was on those teams. Oh, I I feel, he, he didn't come like with he may have been on those teams. Remember the year Greg Vaughn had. He was being tracked on the newspaper with whoa, Sammy Sosa whoa, 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 and Mark whoa, whoa. McGuire. Sexton was a bat off the bench there, Bill. Wow. Yep. What about they should have won a lot more. What about Jeremy oh, Burnitz? You remember Jeremy oh, Burnitz? Yeah. Oh, pornographic hacks. Porn yes. hack Jeremy oh, Burnitz? Oh, yes. Wow. Those Brewers seem too. They should have been a lot better. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Were you terrified of Troy Percival? Put that on the poll. Also, did you know Bartolo Colon had a secret family? Reportedly. Rob Nen. Yeah. Oh, name, yeah. name spelled backwards oh, the same way as it is. Palindrome. Dad looking Rob Nen. Rob Nen. What happened? What happened, Guillermo? Just you screaming palindrome. That's great. right, because dad is yeah. also a palindrome. <laughs> yeah. It's a wonderful way to end the segment. <laughs> Boom. Nailed the dismount. <laughs> I ain't got time to bleed. There's a reason why Dell is used in almost every office building. <laughs> it's, it's because the... <laughs> what are you thinking about, John Jaha? You thinking about John Jaha? I'm thinking about John Jaha. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about John Jaha. Oh why did we care so much about John Jaha? Why? It was unreasonable. Like, I, why? I, we... I still the only person in recorded history with the name John Jaha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There is no another, other John Jaha. A name that sounds like Cody's uh, cough, right? A, a name. Right. Uh... Jaha. <laughs> Jaha. <laughs> John what? <laughs> That's a monster season, Jaha. 35 dingers. Put it, on, put it on the poll. Has there ever been more than just one person named John Jaha? <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. Put it on the wall. His father was Claude L. Jaha. Oh, you know, I don't know what to do. Double. Thank One you. more. Thank you. Dante Bichette said that name. Covered him. I think it Step is. Second started there. Two minutes, yeah. Cody. Get out of here. Two minutes. Get out. Get out. Two minutes. Christ Almighty. Christ Almighty. Dante Bichette sounds like a French dish. Oh, you guys, Jeff Blauser. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Hey. Oh. Oh. Mark Lemke. Mark yeah. Lemke. Yeah. <laughs> you can't say Blauser without Lemke. You can't say Blauser yeah. without Lemke. It's Laurel you're, and Hardy. Put that in the Lemke. bowl. Can you say Blauser without saying Lemke? <laughs> Mickey Morandini. Yeah. Oh! Chris Sabo? Oh! oh. The goggles. Oh. The goggles. Oh. The goggles. Oh. I want to talk about great teams that never won. That Orioles team, let me tell you. Is your home an ADT home? If not, you have to get ADT and help protect 
against break-ins, fire, and carbon monoxide. For a limited time, get ADT's lowest rate starting at just $28.99 a month from the most trusted name in home security. Go to ADT.com slash podcast to take advantage of ADT's lowest rate. With 36-month monitoring contract, early termination and installation fees apply. Excludes taxes and fees. Applies to traditional services only. Certain markets excluded. Licenses available at ADT.com. Don Lebatard. How come John Hamm has never co-starred with Kevin Bacon? That'd be a good combo, wouldn't it? Stugatz. Was that a yoke? <laughs> hey, oh. Hey, hey. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What's that gotta happened? hurt, man. What happened? I thought it was hurt. deserving. I really oh. did. Why? Why? <laughs> Tough crowd over there. I know it was breakfast and all that, but you can't crossbreed. We were s- strictly on swine. That yoke was runny. <laughs> We're doing breakfast. He did ham and bacon. We got the yolk. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald in with us. We have found an amazing common ground. I wanted to talk about Landon Donovan and that he was supposed to be on the show. And Allison said he personally apologized. Now he's not going to be on the show. He's in the news because, you know, the stuff happening with Mexico and the World Cup. I wanted to get to that, but I can't get to it because everyone in here is just pelting me with 90s baseball players. Guys, I'm putting together a list, and I don't even know what this list is, but it makes all the sense in the world to me. I got John Jaha, Ed Sprague, Rob Nen, Ron Gant, Joe Randa, J. Bell, Al Martin on this list. What is this list? But it all makes so much sense. Yeah. Well, which list is it? Is it, you know, guys who look like a dad? Is it 90s, all 90s team? What are we doing here? It's your just names? the way their names look. Okay. Wally Joyner's not on your list? Oh no, 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 no. Way too many. Wally Ball. I know what I'm going for here has fewer syllables than Wally Joyner. Rob Dibble. And why does Rob Nen have so many bees in his name? They were just handing out bees like crazy back then. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. He had two bees in Rob, but only one end to end Nen? <laughs> Mark Gruzelonic. Oh, I dare you to spell Gruzelonic. Go ahead. You might be I able dare to. you. I'm, I'm looking at it and no, I can't spell it. No, I thought you might be able to just because it's a name that resonates from the time period so much. The same way we all did Lemke and Blouser, weirdly. Like, that's the most Caucasian thing that's ever happened in the history of this show. Tied at the hip. <laughs> Why wouldn't you go Bob Nen if you like B so much? And have there ever been a Bob with two Bs at the end? Bob? Oh. It's a, it's a <laughs> great question. Yeah, It is. It is. I'm on it. Someone say Tom Hankey? Mike. Tim Belcher. Oh, God. <laughs> Exciting day, man. Got a million lists. I don't know what any of them mean. I'm confused. I don't know what we're doing. It's amazing, though. Ooh. I mean, I've got Tommy Hurt with eight homers and 110 RBIs one season. Guys, How is that possible? I, I don't know why, but I'm adding Paul Bacco to this list, and it makes sense. It yeah, does. Yeah, You're yeah, right. It does. Right? It, it does make sense. sense. It totally right makes sense. We need, Randa. we need to come up with one name that just sums up what we're talking about. Better, than, G- better than Jaha? Yeah. Oh, no. Ron Gant. That's good. Yeah. Ron Gant's good. Ron Gant. Quick to the point. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be two syllables, yeah. though, Mike. Rob Nen, Ron, yeah. Ron Gant. Ed's Rob Nen, Rob Ed's Ron Gant. You, you, had, you, you put an Al Harris in there, or who'd you put an Al? Al Martin. Al what? Al Martin. J. Bell. Al Martin. J. Al Martin. J. Too Bell. many syllables. No, too many syllables. Too many syllables. J. Bell. J. Ron Gant. Ron Gant. Perfect. perfect. Ed's break. J. Bell, perfect. Ed's break, perfect. Rob Nen, perfect. Chili Walt Davis. Weiss. Chili Davis. Walt Weiss. Walt perfect Walt syllable count. Walt Weiss. Yeah. Walt Weiss. Chili Davis, though. Yeah. Ooh, okay, new list. Chili Davis Chili is a Davis. totally different thing. Yeah, Chili it's a Davis beautiful one. name, though. It's three syllables. Beautiful Scott name. Scott Pose. Perfect. Pose. Scott Pose. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Danny Nagel? No, no Scott Pose. Danny, we're going Scott. Chuck, 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 you are not good. getting this game. Chuck, Chuck, I, there's 15 good. different games going on. Chuck Carr. Chuck Carr. Chuck Carr. Chuck Two syllables, boom, boom, in your face. Used to come to games with a leather jacket that he wore with his face painted on the back. Chuck Carr, baby. Woo! I wish baseball was that today. It is not anymore. <laughs> they will throw baseballs at you if you show up at the ballpark wearing a leather jacket with your face on it. Pat Rap. Oh, Pat Rap. Oh, Pat Rap. That's a haymaker. Oh, it's got two peas. The, the, the pee. You hit me with the pee pee. What do we do now? But Pat only has one T. What is happening? Oh. oh. Who's the manager of this team with Scott Post, Jay Bell, Chuck Carr, Ron Gant, Rob Nen, Pat Rapp? John Bolt. Oh, wow! Oh, oh, oh bug eyed Bolt! Oh, man! Oh, oh. <laughs> what? Wow. Comedy?
Army team from the 50s. What, what the hell are we oh, doing? Oh. Wow. oh. <laughs> this is the greatest show we've ever done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sandwich. Yeah, this is great. All right. Oof. Still topping this. Nope. When did? Cody hasn't contributed anything, man. No, just nothing. He was... Didn't I say Pat Rapp? You want, said Chili Davis no, for some reason. Chili Davis. Do you understand? Do you, did you what understand? were you saying about Dante Bichette? What were you? Well, I we went go? to. We're on two syllables. It's Dan, Stu, and Greg Cody on ESPN Radio. Listen up, people. We have a big favor to ask, and we promise it won't take up too much of your time. You know, our show is supported by some fantastic sponsors, right? Well, we'd love to hear your feedback. Head to ESPNPodcastStudy.com and fill out a short, anonymous survey. That's it. We swear again. That's ESPNPodcastStudy.com. Don Lebatard. America's fastest growing sports show. Stugatz. Because when you start from zero and you have one viewer, you're growing fast. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. All right, forgive me because the show has moved a little fast today and has gotten out of control. So... Without trying to alienate any of you, just understand that we have declared and discovered that 90s baseball, for some reason, is a connection point that we have from grandfather to father to sons to daughters. It's a connection point. We don't know why it is, but it's there. And so this person from a different era who doesn't know what the hell we're talking about writes in, I have no idea what show you all are doing. None. No idea who half the people you are bringing up are, but I'm in tears because I'm imagining <laughs> all of these people are my dad, even though I imagine they all look like either James Vanderbeek or Zach Morris, <laughs> which is exactly what's happening here. Blouser Lemke, that's that's the double play combination right there. <laughs> Blouser to Lemke. That's the double play is combo Zach of the Morris, 90s. Is, is Zach Morris to Vanderbeek. That's, yes, in the movie, that's what it is. But also, I don't know the game that we're playing exactly. Yeah. Well, we're playing many games at one time, it feels like. We're playing the game where Art Howe turns in his lineup card. Yeah. And it says Scott Pose, Jay Bell, Chuck Carr, Ron Gant, Rob Nen, Pat Rapp, Steve Sachs. Okay? And they're playing a team. And I don't know who's managing this team, and I need to round this one out. But I know that team's got Glenn Allen Hill, Heathcliff Slocum, and Mark Rizalanik. <laughs> mm. so Rondell White's on that team, too. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't think you saw what we were doing. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Is Heathcliff Art Howe the manager? The Art Howe's the manager of the other team. We need a manager for this team. We need a manager for the team with Glenn Allen Hill, Heathcliff Slocum, and Mark Rizalanik. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, well, the pitching coach, can I round out the staff on the other staff? Yes, absolutely. Tom House. Okay. Excellent. Writing that one down. Okay, good. Tom House. Tom you remember Tom House? You guys remember Tom House? Mm-hmm. Tom Who House, does pitching it? Yeah. guru from the 90s. Right yeah. on. Tom House. Mm-hmm. Tom House being but we're coming coming up empty here on manager for Grudzolonic's team. Yeah, Glenn Allen Hill and uh, Anybody? Slocum. Must round this out. Ah. Uh, there was a player named Coot Veal, but I'm not sure if he was from the 90s. I got to check that out. Coot Veal. Hmm. All right, two minutes. Hang uh, on. Mike, no, just, no, hang, hang on. on. Get out of here. I mean, if he's from the 90s, Jim Riggleman. What? Oh, that's a good manager what? for that. Yep. What? Oh, is yep. Jim Riggleman yep. the, yep. wait a minute. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just putting it out there. be a bench coach if we find a better one. You know what? I can't believe that the other manager of the other team isn't Bob Cox because we called him Bobby. We yeah. insisted on calling a grown man yeah. leader yeah. Bobby yeah. instead yeah. of Bob. Otherwise, what the manager of the other team would be Bob Cox with his, with Tom House as the pitching coach. Turns out Coot Veal played from 58 to 63. Get out of here. I threw you out of here a second ago. Two minutes because you're playing a different game looking up two syllable players on Wikipedia. That's two minutes in the box. I think I got it, guys. Buck Showalter. Uh, yeah, yeah, better than Riggleman. Riggleman can be his bench coach. Okay. Showalter is still out there prowling, prowling and growling. He's looked the same for 30 he, he years. He really has. He's Showalter. <laughs> Got that. How is that possible? How, how many other survivors? Because all these Matheny come lately. They're all beautiful and stuff. How many of the guys are grizzled that go back to the time that Showalter skippered a team? 
across the decade. I think the sturdy, key- sturdy, <laughs> sturdy. You have to deliver sturdy, the way you are. It's great. Sturdy captain of the ship. Over the decades, over the storms, I'm still trotting out my Orioles pitching staff with a 5.0 ERA, and I am losing to the Yankees and the Red Sox still. Ugh, I don't know why I made him a pirate. I think the key for Buck Showalter is looking 53 when you're 38. <laughs> Who's, who's still out there? And then looking 38 when you're 53, <laughs> yeah. right? Ron it's, Garden Hire's been around for a while, man. We always go young people with vampires, but Buck Showalter may be a vampire. They just got bit late well, in life. Wait a minute. Right. Garden Hire. Gardy. No, but Gardy is super sneaky, Stugatz, because Garden Hire comes in through the 90s player door of Gaetti and Herbeck That's through the right. early 90s door and then graduates to becoming a manager. He crosses all the decades <laughs> as both leader and player. Lifer. <laughs> Mike Lieberthal is on this team. Oh, oh yes, he is. Oh. Oh, let me see when he started Mike managing. What is, uh, Chris, what is your dad doing today? Like earlier in the show, the Fidel Castro thing, like what is your dad doing today? I'm baffled. I asked him if he's okay during the break because uh, it seems off. Hmm. I have sound of that Fidel Castro thing that happened to him earlier. I don't think he understands what we're doing. I don't. I don't think so. Earlier in the show, I, <laughs> it was incredibly awkward, and I don't even feel comfortable playing it with or around him because I don't understand what happened here. Mike, can you set it up? Because I ha- I don't particularly want to relive the sound. Uh, and uh, and I don't remember it clearly. Someone mentioned Fidel, and I guess Greg Cody felt the need to address Fidel Castro we being mentioned Gian, when we were talking about Ozzy Guillen and brought the show to a halt. Hold on a second, though. Hold on. Ozzy Guillen, for those of you who don't know, and make sure Cody knows is a five-minute major. Keep him out of here. Right. Ozzy Guillen, we were talking I'm about the idea. The <laughs> we were talking about the idea of wouldn't you love a Tommy Lasorda, one of these foul mouth managers who didn't care about anything that was politically incorrect at every turn and was still getting the advertisements just because he was such a, a gas bag. And Ozzy Guillen is one of these players who comes in through the player and manager door, and he became a foul mouth guy who comes in and starts the ruination of baseball with a new stadium by leading off a tenure in a Miami where it's considered that Fidel Castro is our Hitler. Uh, he says that, you know, Fidel Castro did some good things. And so that's where... We were talking in a dangerous place filled with landmines. And here is career Miami journalist Greg Cody and perpetually Anglo gringo Greg Cody just doddering, stumbling around, not helping us navigate these landmines. Can you imagine someone like that? I mean, we had him here in Miami for a minute, Ozzy Guillen, but then, you know, he said he loved Castro and that was problematic. Ozzy, uh, oh, Castro, God. Now they're all Ozzie just. Ozzy never worked again. What just happened? I mean, it sounded like he fell off his stool. Like, what? Just, he just, I don't understand. Guys, I can't, I, I still can't shake my Calibra Thal the invention. I'm so jazzed up about it. I did add uh, John Cangelosi and Jim Eisenreich, though. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy. Deserving. Cangelosi. Marquise Grissom. You're bad at this game. Join your dad. I don't get this game. Wow. He just threw you in the penalty box. <laughs> get, join your father, Chris. You deserve each other. Which game are we on? Well, we're rounding out the Cruz Atlanta, Keith Close, Slocum, uh, Glenn Allen Hill team skippered by just, Buckshaw Walter. We, it just rolls off the tongue. We, we, we okay. want whatever it is. Can someone please write us the sentence? Because you'll have more time to think about it than we've clearly had because we're stumbling around on air. But somebody put together this team that by the end of whatever it is that this manager submitting this lineup card, what we want is to have a microphone that is covered in saliva. Okay, (laughs) the goal. I know one of you can do this. This has been happening and moving too fast today to make it happen. But one of you will produce the manager, Buck Showalter, submitting a lineup card of these nine guys. And by the end of it, there will be slobber and drool like from a St. Bernard's face. Off of the microphone. That is the goal. So the manager is either Buck Walter or Jim Fergosi. We haven't figured it out just yet. Right. <laughs> and this lineup card is I'm going to go as fast as possible. Glenn Allen Hill, Heathcliff Slocum, Mark Ruth Atlantic, Mark Lee. Oh, wow. wow. You see Whoa. what's happening there? Whoa. I'm turning into Mel Kuyper Jr. Glenn Allen Hill, Heathcliff Slocum, Mark Ruth Atlantic, Mike Lieberthal, John Cancelosi, Jim Eisenreich. That's only six guys, though. <laughs> we got to round it out. I didn't say 20 names. I need <laughs> I need, I need, need a pitching staff. I need the starting rotation. I need the members of the bullpen. 
All right, I'll get Brett Saberhagen in here. Okay. Ooh, Saberhagen's a good one. Brett Saves is good. good now, how about is Quisenberry's too early? Right, Quisenberry. Quisenberry. How about Isringhausen? It's too early. Ooh, mm. Isringhausen is Ooh, Jason. pretty good. Oh, that's a good yes. one. Yeah, yeah, that is good. a good one. Good one. Hey, hang on, you're going to th- these the whole names take twenty, 20 minutes we're going to write fast now. But there you go, Mike. Isringhausen is your starting pitcher. He's certainly on the fa- on the staff of five. That by the end of it, by the end of the next segment, I want you to shout this lineup card at Greg Cody till you slobber on our microphone and he gets disoriented and careens from the room. How many S's in Isringhausen? Ooh, Jared Saltalamaki. Whoa! Whoa! I ain't got time to bleed. 2000s, though. Doesn't count. Yeah, yeah doesn't, count. Count. Uh, doesn't, doesn't count. count. Doesn't count. Good one, though. Oh, Good effort. We thought we had a buzzer beater. Went to the replay. Oh. VAR denied it. Everyone in the neighborhood knew about Bobby. Bobby, the basketball boy, they called him. Bobby wanted to go pro someday, so he was always out in the driveway shooting hoops. But one day, his mom came out and told him, Hey, your wife wants you to take out the trash? His mom was visiting, and... Bobby was a grown man. He had kind of missed his window. Plus, no one had ever seen him actually make a basket. But on the other hand, Bobby had heard how Geico could save him money on car insurance. So he switched and saved. So it was all good. Don Lebertard. Robert Goulet, man. Just a (laughs) handsome devil. Now that's a French name. Stugatz. Cote is a French name. You look up, if there were phone books anymore, if you look up a, a, a Montreal phone book, my surname would be like Smith or Jones in the Midwest. I mean, Cote is such a, a common name. I make a reservation at Moishe's under the name Cote, and it's like gold. You know, I'm, uh, they, they, the they, fly. they uh, knit a red carpet just for me and my party to walk in because I'm a Cote in Montreal. You know, it's a marvelous thing. It's magical. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you don't know our program, I don't mean to alienate anybody, but we're deep in it right now. So just bear with us for a second as I try to get some people caught caught up because everything's moving too fast around here. Oof. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald has been spinning like a top. We've had to throw him out a couple of times. We got a Trump got in the hopper here that I've been wanting to get to because the president of the United States sounds like Stugat sometimes and Stugat with the cadences, Stugatz, even with the things that he says, sometimes Stugatz sounds like the president of the United States. And so when you step back from our show and realize that Stugatz is running our country, it's an amazing thing to behold. <laughs> and so, Mike, do you have the comedian who does uh, the Trump gots? Has it been vetted yet? Because that's someplace I'd like to end up. OK, I think we'll get there. I have sent them to Mike. Um, I think they're funny, but Mike needs to listen to these uh, things okay. before we All right. Well, but in the middle of that, Allison is talking to me about uh, Allison is talking to me about Landon Donovan. Allison, can you explain to me, please? What happened with Landon Donovan today? Because he was going to join us, and now he's not going to join us. He was in the middle of the controversy. It would have been nice to have him in the middle of the crazy news cycle, and he bailed on us. What happened? He was scheduled yesterday. Then at midnight, I got a, um, he's not going to, he's not available when he was already scheduled from a different person. And then this morning, I received a note that he needed to cancel um and then um through a back and forth um he reached out and apologized for the conflict so he will be joining us just not today all right so we've got that cleared up because we wanted the voice of american soccer who is now endorsing um (laughs) mexico on behalf of wells fargo wells fargo you may be familiar with a billion dollars in mortgage fraud uh slinging munis call the murray's and the Abrahams, not the Jimmys. <laughs> Stay away from Jimmys, Stay man. Stay careful with and the many, Jimmys. Yes. Murray! <laughs> Murray, you light them up as much as you can. Any Murray you find in the phone book, you will soften him over time with slung munis. <laughs> I just wrote down Phil Nevin. I don't think it works for either of the games, but Phil I like Nevin. his name. No, yeah, no. good name, good name. What year did he play? Like, what was his What was his prime? Turn of the century, really? Oh, yeah, okay. Phil Nevin. Pods. <laughs> Yeah. You get Benny Agbayani in there? Yeah, he's on my list. Right Benny under, in the Mets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right under Geronimo Barroa. Does John Cruck go on the other team, or are we still taking... Oh, John Cruck does go on the oh, other yeah, team. Yeah, That's right, a that, good that, one. Get it in there. Is he a 90s guy? Or? Do you bat him ahead of uh, or below move on? Hmm. You got to get Doug Strange on that two-syllable no, team. I think you're on 80s. No, he's a 90s guy. I don't... I, yeah, is Doug he? Strange. Doug Strange, Cody, finally figuring yeah. out the game we're Thank playing, you. even as all of us don't know the game we're playing? Thank you. 
Hmm. I got, don't know. I don't remember Doug Strange. If Terry Pendleton yet? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have oh, Terry yeah. Pendleton. Yeah, yeah. And right under that, I have Mickey Tettleton. Oh, wow. Oh, How are they not related? Oh, oh, I mean, it felt like Tettleton at 50 oh, every season. Hold on. Did. Camp could, Pendleton. Hold on a second. Mike, you realize with Pendleton, Tettleton, you realize you could do a we didn't start the fire. Um, once upon a time, 10 years ago, we did this weirdly, I think, with Buccaneers. Uh, but uh, do Any sort of pirates because we were obsessed with uh, I know, pirate. Mike, but do you realize if we were to do just this game of whatever, the, the wonderful song that would be found in Tettleton and Pendleton? Because, hold on a second, people. We're going in the Wayback Machine here. I think I'm we sorry. need more names, though. Okay. Yeah. I, we do need more names. Kingman. This, no, but it's going to take it's going to take work. No, Kingman is too early. 70s. That's 70. Uh, Willie Young Van Landingham. Yes. Oh, nice. Yes. Sounds See, like a rich somebody is going to break off a, a freestyle foe. Somebody's going to do it. Don Libertard. There's fascination in power rankings. In fact, I'm coming out with a power ranking for power rankings which ESPN's NFL power ranking right now is debuting at number third on my list. Right. So it's a good power rank. Stugatz. Well, who's two and one on that list? Well, you know, I've, this uh, is where his story falls apart. No, because it's a competing, <laughs> it's a non-ESPN entity, so we don't want to uh, air it on this uh, How do you play? airtime. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Mike, I don't know if this guy is too regional to qualify, uh, too, too local, uh, but did Geronimo Baroa? Uh, make your list, Geronimo. Yeah, Geronimo Barrow is on there. He made the list. Yeah, wow. Yeah, okay, yeah, I think yeah. of him more Blow locally. Todd Van Poppel. Yeah. Um. Uh. But before we go more down this path, please, because I just want to slow this down for the audience. We've got Trump gots ready, lined up in one form. I think we're ready to go on Trump gots. We are not ready to go on Trump gots, as you know. With these things, they require a lot of vetting. They are dangerous. We are playing with political fire with a Trump impersonator who sounds a lot like Stugat. So we will get that sound to you as soon as it's clear. There's one that's solid, but it goes for close to two minutes, and one of them that didn't make the cut. So I want to get my editing on this one and see if I can cut it down. Okay, and we'll get back to the Geronimo Baroa game in a second. But Guillermo last night, Marlins and Giants. Guillermo has taken up a cause here, a crusade, and I continue to get mocked about this crusade by powerful baseball people who say, look, look at America's mighty radio show there. Look at how many all-star votes you guys get. You are more roar than reach, Levitard show. Your uh, Lewis Brinson campaign is a failure. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a laughing stock. You got the power of your show behind uh, a campaign and nada. So we're right now. Everyone's laughing at us, Guillermo. You know that. Well, something's up with those votes. I've, I've, you know, I'm looking into that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but I'll tell you this: the movement has spread, Dan. I was just going through my mentions from last night. Two different signs at the stadium in San Francisco. Two different groups of people taking Brinson All Star signs. Go to AllStarGame.com if you want to send Lewis Brinson to the All Star Game. By the way, and Harper and Marquez, as we've been saying the whole time, are one and two, and they're running away with it. So if you want, you can put them on there too. And just. As an aside, I'd like to say this. You guys who are voting seriously for this All-Star game, not that Lewis Brinson's vote is not serious, JT Romuta should be an All-Star. He's mm -hmm. the best catcher in the National League, and it's a joke that he's not yeah. in the top five. But that's another thing. That's a campaign for another day. Oh, he was so good last night, Dan. You want to tell you what he did, or you want to say Hold it? Hold on a second. You say, you just, say well, no, no, no. I want you to say it, but Mike, I wanted to ask you if today's Markakis is yesterday's uh, Tettleton, uh, Marcakis has been playing long enough that I think he makes his team. No, yeah. get out of here. Turn of the century. No, Marcakis, really? has been, Marcakis no. has been playing for 20 years, hasn't he? I don't know. It feels like it. Yeah. So, last night. Delano to Shields. Ooh. Excellent. Ooh. Go Pulsifer. Danny Tartable. Oh. Danny Tartable. Danny Tartable. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know, Roy. Yeah. I know Pulsifer. Yeah. I know. Bill Pulsifer's on there. Yeah. Yeah. So is Ron Karkavice. Oh, Ron oh Karkavice. Yeah, Cement Karkavice. footed Ron Karkavice. Yeah, and, and Candy Maldonado. Mm -hmm. mm. Jose Viscaino. Woo! Ooh, nice. We love dancing on this common ground. Now, I like to call it a burial ground for where great sports radio used to be. But gosh, is it fun on this one common ground across all our generations where we can huddle up and shout Geronimo Baroa and all of us can feel good about it. Poll in Senegal, 0-0. Zero, zero. Yeah, so it kind of feels like uh, we're on the, the precipice of a goal, though. Yeah. Field goal in the hopper. When? Here we go. Here we go. Senegal. Oh.
Go. Oh. Mike, the problem is we need two goals. I mean, yeah, and, one by, each, and one from each team. We only need one. Still the first half. Don't panic. Is Will Clark on that other team? He better be. Oh, oh good Will chance there. Oh, wow. Almost an own goal. Careful with the play-by-play. Yeah, right yeah, yeah, Greg, we got all sorts of copy yeah, yeah. issues. Yeah, you can react to something on a, like a 10-second yeah, yeah, delay and just say, oh, this thing yeah. happened. Hey, soccer thing happened. That's your oh, World okay, Cup day. Did anyone in the history of baseball look better with the eye black than Will Clark? Uh, I think it enhanced him, like, well, tremendously. That's a, that's a good take. Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Hold on a second. Let's examine this. I, I remember Brian Jordan. Yeah. Oh, Brian, Brian Jordan, Jordan was playing football yes. and baseball, he and so he was good. doing. Oh, yeah. oh, wait a minute! This is a different game because Brian Jordan is he a dad? Is Brian Jordan? No, no, not as dad as Ellis Burks is dad. Ellis Burks is totally dad. Totally. Yeah, Eddie Eddie Murray Eddie also. Murray was a dad. Eddie yeah. Murray was Older definitely dad. a dad. Older Harold dad. That I feel like Eddie Harold Murray. Baines is a yes. dad. Oh, 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 wait a Baines. minute! No, wait a minute! Come on now, Harold Baines is a dad, but Eddie Murray is his granddaddy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. thank yes. you. Yes, thank you, Roy. Yes. That's right. Eddie yes. Murray is the yes. young yes. granddad. Had him very young. Yeah. He had Harold Baines very young. Yes. Don't forget his cousin <laughs> Gerald Williams. Oh. Eddie Murray has young, cool grandpa written all over him. <laughs> Great grandpa is Claude L. Claude L. Jones. Yes. I said Paul Osmark already. I'm going crazy. All right, let's do this. Hmm. <laughs> what is the lineup card that is being submitted by whom to get slobber all over the microphone? You you say I've gotten in your way. I've played defense against your ability to shine on today's show. Okay, we're going to do this. Okay, this is a lineup card. Do we have the other one? Do we have the... Yeah, the other one's a lot easier to do. Okay, you want to do that one first just to show that the, the degree of difficulty on this game that we don't know what we're playing? Well, I mean, this is a lineup card handed in by Art Howe. And it says, uh, Scott Poach, Jay Bell, Chuck Carr, Ron Gant, Rob Nen, Pat Rapp, Steve Sachs, Tom House, move on. Woo! Okay. It's an odd lineup, though. you got pitchers yeah. hitting. It doesn't... Uh, I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> okay, and this is a lineup card being handed in by Buck Showalter. Oh, boy. Whew. Whew. Glenn Allen Hill, Bill Pulsifer, Heath Clutch Slocum, Terry Pendleton, Mickey Tettleton, Mark Rizalanik, Danny Tortable, Mike Lieberthal, Ken Caminetti, Jose Vizcaino, John Cangelo, C. Todd Van Poppel, Andy Vance Lake, Jim Eisenreich, Candy Maldonado, Brett Saberhagen, Geronimo Baroa, <gasps> Jason Isernhausen, Delano DeShields, Mickey Moore, and Dini Paul Awesomeacher, uh, Mike Mordecai, Benny Agbayani, Doug Mankavich, Kim Bottenfield, Ron Cockerbrace, Pat Lasesh. That's 97 words right there. 97 words right there. Yeah. Still no goals. Yeah. I'm lightheaded. That was amazing. I'm going to go get water. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think we should. Yeah. All right, everybody, yeah. let's. we need to cool off for a second. Everybody's lightheaded. We're going to careen into an alley and um, and try not to develop an addiction as a show. <laughs> Does Lenny Harris look like a dad? Don Lebertard. Greg, are you going to say anything? Or are you just going to sit there checking the Internet? When when I have something to say, I say it. What I was thinking of as you said that was that I think Black History Month is also split into two half months, which is terrible. That's not true. It's the not first true? half and the oh, second half of sure. February. There you <laughs> go. Right. Stugats. No, it's February into March, isn't no, it? Let me it's not, it's February. No, no, it's okay. Hang on. Good contribution, though, when you decided to talk. That was good. Uh, Black History Chris, Month. Yeah, you're... <laughs> Greg, I'm I'm like a dog with a bone on this. Ah, I'm wrong. Okay. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Mike, do you have Oda B. McDowell? Oda B. McDowell has anyone nominated him? I know you guys want me to get to the serious stuff that we've been doing cotton candy all day, and I will get to the serious stuff at some point. But I do want to talk to Guillermo about this Brinson story from last night because it's in our wheelhouse. We got local kid, Miami kid. We've been trying to get him into the All-Star game. He's beefing with the Giants, and the Giants are being the Giants. The Giants are, you know, bum garner. You know, uh, get back outside behind that cabin boy and cut me some wood. You know, like the Madison Bumgarner <laughs> team is the, is the Giants. Hunter Strickland, these guys who get mad at uh, at players who don't play the game the right way. So last night in the ninth inning, the Giants were winning 4-2, to two, and the Marlins had a, a nice little rally going. And Lewis Brinson, when he was up, they were down by one. There was a runner on third, I believe. And they threw up and in at him, first pitch. And then later in the bat, he, in the at-bat, he got an RBI single. So as he's you know running to first base, he throws his bat. He's very expressive. He seems to yell something at Strickland. And then when he gets to first, he's still like hopping around, and he's he's happy because he's had a rough season. But he's picked it up in June. He's gotten hot. He's hitting over 300. His OPS is way up. He's having a really good month. So 
Then he heads over to third base on another hit, and uh, the Marlins take the lead. So the, the Giants blew a two-run lead in the ninth. They end up losing the game. Spoiler alert. So while he's at third base, they take out Hunter Strickland, who's a pitcher who gave up the hit to him, and he kind of threw up an in on him. And while he's doing that, you know, I guess he didn't like what Lewis Brinson had been doing before. So then Brinson had a few choice words, basically telling him, get out of here. But he didn't say, get out of here. He said something else. F-O-H. Yeah, he said that. And then he, he, Strickland intentionally went to like the outside entrance to the dugout, not like the one by home plate, the one by third base. So he passed like right by him. So Brinson's like, I ah, didn't want any of that. So the Giants did not like what was going on. So the Giants, led by Madison Bumgarner, who's on my fantasy team, Shocking. unrelated, they were yelling at Brinson, and Brinson just kind of didn't even look at them, didn't even give them the time of day, and he just, with his hand, was kind of like, meh, dismissively yeah. waving them off. It's so great. It's so great. I mean, he's hitting 180, but his batting average is up over 20 points right. from when we started this that campaign. Today's Red story, yeah. campaigning for Brinson. AllStarGame.com. A victory for Brinson is a victory for all of us. A victory yes, for Brinson is a really victory is. for uh, sportsmanship, for attitude, for grace, for charisma, for... Hutzpah. Mm-hmm. Well, sportsmanship, I guess some people could say maybe it wasn't the best sport. Maybe not, but, it, for, but still. For fun. It was for a big fun, win for fun. fun. It's a big win. You're, if you do not vote for Lewis Brinson for the All-Star game, you're voting against fun. That's mm-hmm. what you're doing. That's right. So now we've got, now, now our show can actually get behind this in a way that's meaningful, that makes the people understand Brinson is a cause worth fighting for. Your campaign stinks so far, Billy. We have no no reach and only roar. Funson. Lewis Funson. But don't <laughs> write that because then those votes will not count. Make sure to write Lewis Brinson for sure. We have Murray. I mean, that's our campaign. <laughs> He's put a vote in. Murray uh, sent me a little email saying he voted for Lewis Brinson. How about that? No, I don't believe that. He did. Murray! Murray's using email? No, he sent me a text. <laughs> mailed a letter. Murray's using text to God. Yo, chicken thon. What? You're a liar, Brad. Almost immediately an email became a text. All right. Do it. Doesn't have your number. See if I can find <laughs> Did you not account that a, for an, an 81 year old's not going to be texting and emailing? I text. Uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. <laughs> Guillermo, Guillermo, put it on the poll at Levitard Show. Is the eighty-one-year-old texting and emailing? Like you guys think? You guys really think Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood at eighty-eight are firing off texts? <laughs> yes, I do. You don't think they are? You don't think Gene Hackman is firing off a text to uh, to Clint Eastwood? Put it on. Put it are on you the, out of your mind? Put, put it on the poll. It is is eighty-eight-year-old Gene Hackman sending texts? No, there's got to be an age limit on some of this stuff, no? But anyway, so we're in the middle of all that, and Mike Ryan is trying to get some Trump got sound cleared, and Stugatz is badgering me with Mattingly. Good, look, look good with eye black. He did. Look good with eye black. Mattingly is one of these other guys that goes through the 90s as a player and manager to become something. Correct, yes. I'm not certain he's not the uh, the player that, that rocked the eye black the best in the history of the major leagues. I thought it was Will Clark, but someone sent me a picture of Mattingly, and he looks amazing. Tom, Tommy Hurd did it pretty well, too, that season. He had eight home runs and 108 RBI. <laughs> Bryce Harper in today's game rocks the yes. eye black. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He gets creative with it, which I love. Mike, that's something in the World Cup, too, right? Guy, don't certain guys run around with eye black? No. <laughs> well. Why wouldn't guys run around with eye black? You're acting like if nobody would do it. They're too busy not scoring goals. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen it. What? But what happened to eye black in soccer? Just everywhere. What happened? Are you telling me it died with this era where the only guys we can go get for eye black are Don Manningly and Will Clark and guys from an era? Nobody's doing that anymore. You know what I don't like? I don't like the strips of eye black. No, the no. stickers. Yeah, I like. Cheating. Cheating. I like what Tom Brady yeah. does, where he yeah. dips his finger into yeah. the black paint or whatever, and he puts it under his warrior spirit. Yeah, well, he paints yeah. on his warrior paint. Yeah. Some college players go too far with the eye black. Can we agree with but that? But Manziel did it all the time, didn't he? Not like all over his face, where it's like you can't see anything. That's Didn't too Johnny much. Manziel play with eye black? Yes or no? Yes, he did. Why do people put on eye black at night? That I don't get. Showy. Because the lights can be the lights. Yeah, the no. lights get in your eye. Yeah. I'm with you. I think they're just doing it for effect. They just, they just like the look. It's intimidating. They do it. I don't think the lights have anything to do oh, with but it. No, but the theory behind eye black, you guys do. I'm, I'm assuming this. It's something I've always thought. Please correct me if I'm wrong. 
The theory behind eye black is that it helps you with glare and sun and it protects your sight line. That's what I always thought was the reason for eye black. Then some people may have graduated to, you know, it being a style, but I always thought that was the point of eye black. That's why you guys laughing at me because I'm saying the soccer players aren't doing that today. If it's, if it's something that helps your eyesight, people might use it. Uh, and they don't do it. Uh, Johnny Manziel, 50% of the time, wore eye black. Wow. 50%? Where yeah. do you get that and, stat? And 50% of that time, it was sticker form. Uh, and the other 50%, it was uh, the paint. Wow. But when mm. did eye black die as a thing is what I'm asking you guys. Well, it's still going. What do you mean? Mark, mm-hmm. Mark Sanchez did not wear eye black well. No, he did not. No. He did not. Eye black sticker guy's the worst. Yeah. yeah. Oh, then you're calling Tim Tebow the worst. Oh, Wow. If the shoe fits. Whoa. Careful. Careful. Because your your father did something awkward around Castro, and this is worse. Doing something awkward Tebow. around about Tebow, yes. <laughs> Be careful. Bro. Someone's forgetting the messages that he wrote on his eye block. That's why he needed the sticker. Yeah. Mm. Two wow. minutes. Forgive me. Ooh, wow. wow. That, two minutes. For, tough penalty. Father. <laughs> for I've sinned. Ooh, John Randall, eye black. Oh, him and Hovan. Oh, Terrifying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Remember those two guys together? Oh, my yeah. God. If you have eye black on your forehead, I mean, you're just using it. Listen up, people. We have a big favor to ask, and we promise it won't take up too much of your time. You know, our show is supported by some fantastic sponsors, right? Well, we'd love to hear your feedback. Head to ESPNPodcastStudy.com and fill out a short, anonymous survey. That's it. We swear again. That's ESPNPodcastStudy.com. Don Lebatard. Dr. Phil was a middle linebacker for Tulsa. <laughs> That's not true. Come on, please. Please tell me. That can't true. be true. Please Guillermo, say it is. Guillermo, put it on the poll. Did you know that Dr. Phil was a middle linebacker for Tulsa? Stugatz. What are you doing? You're offsides. <laughs> <laughs> Now that's encroachment. <laughs> Are there any other football terms? This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, before we get to Greg Cody's Back in My Day, and also, this has been a nightmare today. I don't know if the rest of you have felt it, but every damn segment, Greg Cody is uh, not doing his job and wandering into the other studio to talk about this barbershop quartet thing that he wants to do. And now I think has done uh, over the reluctant protests of people, uh, including his son, who might be able to go to human resources because you guys didn't seem to want to do this. And now Cody is telling me during every break, he's like, hey, that bar- that barbershop quartet thing I did, it was really good. Well, it was our first rehearsal, you know, so uh, there was a little rust in the room but uh you know we're going to get together for an hour uh every other night in my garage uh we're going to hone the thing we're going to come up with full uniforms uh and and we'll probably be ready to go on tour i would say in the fall (laughs) um guillermo help me okay because i'm beginning to get annoyed by his his behavior today and and just his general nonsense. So you're going to Bill? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm in on this. I mean, our biggest problem Thank right you, now Billy. is we don't have a name yet. And we no, talked we about maybe Greg and the Show Killers, but that didn't catch. So we're looking for a name for our barbershop quartet. Yeah, help us out, listeners. So, anyways, Please. he's got this cockamamie idea that is great if we it, could play that on the air. That should way. be rejected by all. But Mike, what have you gotten cleared on Trump? Trump sounds like got got sounds like Trump. The president of the United States is uh, is Stugatzian in cadence uh, in the way that he says things. Thanks for clarifying. Uh, de- delivering <laughs> delivering things in a certain tone. So these are actual words Stugat spoke on the show, spoken by a Donald Trump impersonator. It was the uh, lacrosse fest or something. Quite frankly, they don't deserve for me to remember their name. I'm going to spend every single day burying this tournament i'm serious until someone calls me and apologizes because what happened in the semi-final game was egregious we're in the top division we go 4-0 in the most difficult division we beat mass elites which is the best program in massachusetts we beat them by a goal we win the next game one of the top travel teams in new jersey (laughs) 
<laughs> we beat them by a goal. We get to the semifinals, and because it's a New Jersey tournament, and they are so entitled about their lacrosse up there in New Jersey and Long Island, get over yourselves, the referee decided, I am not allowing a little team from Florida to win our tournament. So he gift-wrapped the entire game to the New Jersey team we played in the semifinals. They lost. They got crushed in the finals 8-2, to two, which I'm very happy about because I'm telling you, that program and that coach, you're next after I'm done with this tournament. I'm coming after you. God, now, that doing? those are Stugat's actual words. He spoke them, uh, not, but mo- not but Monday, after a weekend <laughs> of lacrosse, and there's more. The referee, who's five minutes late, and the other referee, who's ten minutes late, oh. both from New Jersey, they decided. I told our coaches, we can't win this game. We're not going to win this game. I haven't said that in seven years. Why did I say it? The referees would not allow us to win that game. And so I am telling you, Jim, the referee, who I will have your last name by the end of the show, I am telling you that I am going to bury you for the remainder of time until you call me and call my team, admit what you did, and apologize to my team. That's it. Period. C-O-B. Time now for Greg Cody's Back in My Day. And now, it is time to take a trip down memory lane. Here's your guy, Greg Cody, with Back in My Day. Bathroom time! Oh, those cherished moments when the door clicks shut and suddenly it's just you, alone on the Ring of Honor, luxuriating in the most intimately personal time of your day. Of your life, really. (laughs) Bathroom time is something we can do as often as we like and at no extra charge. Inside those compact walls, we spiritually commune with the maker by celebrating the bodily functions he gifted us. Bathroom time is the globe's one great common denominator, the numbers one and two sufficient to link the world. Rich and poor share this room. Heads of state and supermodels to hobos, you and me, it's all that we have in common. That at some point soon, we'll all be alone in the can, drawers at our ankles, pinching a loaf. Back in my day, bathroom time was a quiet celebration. An almost holy time of solitude and reflection, where we might tackle the meaning of life, or at least reconnoiter our own life. That changed. The communion of the commode has been usurped by the smartphone from which we are powerless to untether. You wouldn't be caught on your phone in church or during dinner, so why on earth would you desecrate the sanctum of the toilet, that most sacred of rooms where your day's most intimate business is done? Make the bathroom a no-phone zone, as I have done, and watch the whole new world open when you remember what it was like to be alone with your thoughts. Recently, for example, I noticed that Charmin has come out with a scalloped edge tissue paper, the curvy tear line replacing the traditional straight edge. I made a mental note that extraordinary and extraordinary sound nearly alike, but with polar opposite meanings. I'll snap open a newspaper, classic accoutrement to the John. Better yet, I'll read whatever's available. Did you know that my Crest toothpaste has only 0.2%? 4% active ingredients yet claims to make me feel fresh up to seven times longer. That's fantastic. If it had even 1% active ingredients, I'd feel fresh roughly 30 times longer. Folks, ditch the smartphone and get back to you time in that most essential of rooms. Feel a kinship with the world as you flush and reach for the spray and understand that somewhere Warren Buffett and Rihanna are doing the same thing, though likely in different rooms. I'm Greg Cody, and that's how it was yeah. back in my day. That so badly needed an editor. It so badly at the end needed. It, there was an aside that didn't have anything to do with anything. What's that? And Which one? Just, just talking about toothpaste or whatever the hell. Well, you I was were reading. Doing. I read uh, labels in the bathroom. You don't do that? No, I've done it. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just saying that what you did there in the middle. Needed a little, a little tweak. It could, it could be right. You could be right. Scallop edge, huh? Yeah. Have you noticed that? No. Yeah. It, it's revolutionary. Something different. Everyone in the neighborhood knew about Bobby. Bobby, the basketball boy, they called him. 
Bobby wanted to go pro someday, so he was always out in the driveway shooting hoops. But one day, his mom came out and told him, "Hey, your wife wants you to take out the trash." His mom was visiting, and Bobby was a grown man. He had kind of missed his window. Plus, no one had ever seen him actually make a basket. But on the other hand, Bobby had heard how Geico could save him money on car insurance, so he switched and saved. So it was all good. Don Lebertard. Who are the just generic names that they're going to put in a Marlins uniform and tell us to eat opening day? Rojas. Who's the Smith? Oh, Caleb Smith. You know what the C in Caleb stands for, right? K's Stugatz. <laughs> It's a good one. You know, Dan, you know K's are strikeouts, right? Yeah. It's a good one. Caleb Smith, K's. Dr. K. That reminds me of my favorite cereal, Special C. Ooh. Hey. Oh, I mean, come on. I started the whole thing. And I finished it. Very upset. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. I do not have any earthly idea how I'm supposed to talk about this Kellen Winslow story, the details of which uh, you could read the reports on TMZ and elsewhere. The details are uh, horrifying and don't have a precedent within the world of sports in anything that we've covered. Darren Sharper had an issue with becoming a serial rapist that we all discovered as it went through the jury system. But we've not seen what this is in terms of allegations, where... A football name, Kellen Winslow, football royalty. How many names are there? Man, the Mannings, how many names are there that represent where you think of them like you think Colangelo in basketball? You are gonna, we're gonna get Hanky out of here. We're gonna bring in Colangelo because that's a name that can just settle things, a uh, family name. Yeah, dad's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, Winslows are certainly, the Winslows are certainly one of those names for sure. So he's a tight end before anyone's this kind of tight end, super athlete LeBron. That's his father. And now, his son is being accused of being a serial rapist against helpless women, homeless women, uh, elderly women uh, approaching, uh, you know, 90 years old. And I just don't know if this stuff is true, how in God's name you can get around to trying to explain that to the people who have loved and supported you all your life. Like, how the hell do you explain what kind of mind state you have to be in? What I don't have a way to discuss this intelligently because the terrain, the subject matter, just feels uh, creepy and degenerate and wrong in a way that's hard to articulate because I don't have it. it I don't have it's not merely as bad as rape. Serial rapist Darren Sharper. It's that he's also doing this preying on the oldest of women. Like how how do you discuss these allegations intelligently um you're asking the wrong person i mean i there's no way to you know it's there's such heinous crimes he's been charged with and it just reminds you that there has to be something in, in his wires crossed in his brain i mean i'm not saying he's mentally ill it but, just but, it just seems impossible to believe that anyone sane can do something like that that is this evil. Yeah. You know, it just seems it. I, and I don't know. Maybe I'm being naive. And it's just a reminder that uh, and and it was just a week or two ago that Anthony Bourdain, the great chef, commits suicide. It's another reminder that you know being rich and being famous do not insulate you from demons. I mean, but, but this, we don't know that it's mental illness. Yeah, we, we, we don't. don't. We no, don't no. But I just don't know what the hell it is. Is what I'm saying. I don't know how to classify. I feel it's reckless to classify it as that, but it's reckless to classify it as anything. Because what the what realm of understanding? When we were trying to talk about this Sandusky stuff in real time as Penn State was happening, like what realm of understanding are you going to reach your audience on? You know, the idea that someone would be committing sex crimes against kids because it's. <laughs> Sex crimes by themselves are horrific, but the idea that you would be doing it to the most helpless on the extremes of the age spectrum, like, I, I, it's just outside of my realm of comprehension. Can you I, imagine, because you talked about how do you explain this? How do you discuss this with your family? How Can how, you imagine how the family is experiencing this? this? What I'm saying, I mean, that this is the thing that I was asking you, okay? Now, there are real victims here. And Kent Kellen Winslow Jr. is not one of them, if these allegations are true. Okay. But I'm curious how that goes over 
if you feel like you've known somebody all your life, if you, because Kellen Winslow Sr. must know that he, he must feel like he knows his son. He went through that recruiting process with his son. He was a part of his son's life throughout all of that. He was very hands-on with the career of his son who was carrying on that tight end legacy. And now these crimes come across your doorstep, not just about a person you thought you knew, but about your son. Mm. And now he's taking the family name with him through this. If this is true, he's taking the family name through this. How the hell does anyone explain this? Like, I give you the allegations. I give you the crime. And never mind all the theories that you've heard about, you know, rape not being about sex, being about power. I'm talking about this, these specific details, that he's a serial rapist and he's preying on the most extreme helpless in, in motor homes. Like, the, these how do you explain that to your father? Um, man, I, have, I mean, it's uncharted territory for, for everyone. I don't know how you explain that to your father. I don't how know. How do you explain to your mother? E- even if you say, hey, that, you know, mental illness and football, I don't know if dad can, you know, I don't know. Does, does he forgive you in that spot? Do the family, does, because parents have a, have a tendency to forgive their kids I, for just I, about I, anything. I, so I, what happens I, there? I, I mean, I, I felt um, weird for Sandusky's wife going through all of that, having that in her home without knowledge of perhaps having that in her home? You just mentioned mental illness and football. I I don't think, whatever the explanation is, and the defense might be to deny, maintain innocence, or explain away with mental illness. Mental illness and football, keep football out of this equation. There's plenty of deviant behavior out there by people that don't have head collisions. This will probably be explained to his family if the allegations are true with some sort of mental illness, which is hard enough in itself to understand. Can you explain to me, Mike, how this is being discussed or covered by the network, how ESPN is handling this story? Because this story is um, the, the details on this story are so foul as you can't put them in front of people enough. But as we saw with Aaron Hernandez and all those grisly details, there's only so much that you can cover something once you've passed the basic facts of what you know, which are flimsy, right? Because it's still an allegation. How is the network covering this story? Because you're talking about a royal family in football accused of a heinous crime that is that transcends whether your sports fandom. And if you're just paying attention in America to the things going on with men and power, you're going to have a situation like this where this gets consumed beyond the sports pages, beyond the sports realm. The coverage that I've seen of it is very matter-of-fact, reporting of facts, and people don't really take a segment to devote to it because it's hard to understand. It's hard to discuss. Never mind the subject matter is hard to actually process. I feel bad for Kellen Winslow Sr., who spends his whole career, his whole life, building a good name, literally a good name, yeah. And then the day before Father's Day gets the news that his son has not only been arrested, but for this. I know, but that's the male perspective. Like, there's so many the victims. real victims oh, here. Oh, I don't. Don't get me no, wrong. I know. No, but Greg feels bad for I know. Victims. I get that. I'm, I'm not aware saying, who the victims are. I'm not are. saying you're not But allowed. I understand that. Like, imagine reading that your son or your right. daughter had done something I, like that. I'm not blaming him for running it through the father prism. I'm just saying that we don't have a lot of voices right here, right now, running it through the woman's prism. Like, that's not... Like that's it's fine. You could feel for Winslow's father, and you could also feel for his mother. Like I'm, anyone who cares about that dude who thought they who were betrayed by these particular details, you would understand why it is that we'd arrive here. Oh, he's probably trying to piece stuff together too, trying to identify. Lord knows there are now things in Kellen Winslow's past uh, incidents with the law that might make a bit more sense. Uh, when pieced together with these newest allegations, that uh, as a father, you're probably thinking, "Where did I fail?" He's probably beating himself up. I, I just, I do wonder. I do wonder about the mental state of the Winslows, of the family, of caring about someone, because now you get into a, a place, and this is just crazy to consider the depths, the profundity of this. But you find yourself in a place where can you forgive? If these crimes are, crimes are true, can you possibly forgive someone you love? And then if you can forgive someone you love, you now have to worry about their safety in prison for the rest of their life uh, and, you know, whatever their suicidal state might be because they're Aaron Rodgers. So if you forgive that person and still love that person. Aaron Hernandez. Aaron Hernandez, excuse me, sorry. If you forgive that person and still love that person, then you find yourself in these situations where <laughs> how, how do you manage that one? How do you manage that one if you're Kellen Winslow Sr.? I'm going to the wrong person on this. 
I prefer you not ask me about this topic anymore. Don Lebatard. You want me to get real? Stugats. I'll get real. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Dan Lebatard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. The Nationals have acquired reliever Calvin Herrera from the Royals for three prospects. June. Bartolo Colon. Earned his 244th win, passing Juan Marichal for the most by a pitcher born in the Dominican Republic. Dennis Martinez has more victories among pitchers from Latin America with 245 wins. Think Cologne gets to the Hall of Fame? I think he might. I'll be the judge of that. Okay. Uh, what? What? He, what do you mean? He's steroids. He's yes. and, and secret family. Don't you dare say that Reportedly. about Bartolo Colon. Are you kidding me? Reportedly secret family. He's like a Hall of Fame character. He is. I think he deserves. I think he's deserving the Hall of Fame. I think everyone would love if if Bartolo Colon. That's a different Cologne. Hall of Fame, though. That's a totally different Hall of Fame. You want to do a Hall of Fame of characters? Sure. Would Bartolo Colon classify Mike? Yeah, him, Alfredo Omezaga. Uh, Mezzi. That's not a character. Why can't he be like a contributor to the game? Yeah. Same thing with like Jose Canseco. Kevin he Malone. should go in as a contributor to the game. He cleaned up the game that he dirtied, but he cleaned it up. No vote. Just checked his stats. Four all-star appearances. Insufficient. This is what I hate about Hall of Fame voters. <laughs> this is right here. This is everything. <laughs> okay, good. Keep guardianing. The gate. Like Billy White Shoes Johnson, I don't think he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but he should be. He's a character. That's what I'm talking about. Those kind of guys, you know? AJ Pierzynski, Kevin Millar, mm-hmm. characters. Yes. No. Bobby Jenks, was honorable contribution just, to the just game. Fat, just fat. Yep. And finally, pooping creates the same pain as childbirth for sloths, which is probably why sloths only poop and urinate once a week. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Now, you may be saying to yourself right now on ESPN Ooze, you may be saying to yourself, what just happened? Did those guys just have an uncomfortable conversation that involved uh, Kellen Winslow, and then all of a sudden we got the highest-ranking woman in the ESPN Executive Bureau in the middle of our stuff to make sure that we don't do stupid stuff. But that's not what happened. What happened is, and we like to be transparent about this thing. Mm Mm-hmm. This is the most powerful woman in the company, right? Pretty high? Yes, she is. And so we all got scared. We were having Stop asking me questions. Well, we were man. this is the thing. <laughs> this is what I do when I'm scared. I ask you questions. For two and a half hours, we've been a rollicking magic carpet ride. And then what happens? It screeches to a halt at the Kellen Winslow story. And I just want to examine the leadership breach by me, uh, by Mike, and by extension. I'm sorry, Marsha, to drag you into this, but by extent, the leadership breach, we were having so much fun for two and a half hours, and then mm-hmm. boom, we're doing the Kellen Winslow story. What the hell happened around here? Mm-hmm. Bartolo Colon, I will tell you, all-star in three different decades. I mean, if that's not a Hall of Famer, I don't know what is. Three different decades. Go ahead. Give me the long list of guys who have done that. I'm waiting. I'm paying the maximum fine volunteering it here because I killed Aaron Rodgers last segment. You guys let me get away with it because I was so I was so rattled by Marsha Keegan. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pay the maximum fine, right? That's the maximum five five dollars for killing Aaron Rodgers when he's not dead. No, I twenty dollars. Yeah, was that a wow. high? Really? Oh, it's yeah. a bigger fine. Yeah, than it's that. a bigger fine. It's Remember uh, when you killed Layden? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This particular one is sixty dollars. Wait a minute! I thought. Wait a minute! I thought the biggest fine was five dollars. Cal Ripken Jr. Really? Alan Three Travel. decades. Alan Travel. Nolan Ryan played four decades, only an All Star in two of those decades. How about that? Right? Wouldn't uh, Bartolo Colon be a compiler? Isn't he in that category? Yeah, he's in that category. Yeah, thank yeah. you. But characters, though, we're just talking characters. Sure. So I think it's a bit unfair to blame Marshy here. I mean, listen, the microphone goes on, and it's you know you decide, you dictate what we talk about. When I say it's a leadership breach, I mean it's a complete one. It's all of us. It's a failure from the, from the very highest points of the neck of the network. Eddie Murray, three decades. Yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't have to wait that long. Did we agree? Did we put up a poll finally that Eddie Murray looks like your uh, Harold Baines's granddaddy? Did we do that, or did we not put that up yet? I'd like to update some polls. Can we do that? We can. Yeah, give me a second. At right. Lebitard Show is where you reach us on the polls. Uh, we got some absurd ones up there today. Carl Yastrzemski, boyhood hero, all-star in three decades. Yaz. Isn't Damn Yaz, right. but isn't Yaz the ultimate compiler? No. God, you blaspheme. 
It's a matter Wait a with minute. you. Guillermo, didn't we settle this the other day with Kirchner and Bob oh. Ryan? Is it? I thought that we threw Yaz at Bob Ryan, and Bob oh. Ryan was okay. You were trying to rile up Bob Ryan, and you did successfully. But didn't he give you Yaz as a compiler? He did say that Yaz is a compiler. Oh, my God. Uh, let me unfollow him on Twitter. Hold on a second. Let's call Bob Ryan right now, and let's have a oh. real old man fight in the in the the on the sports radio waves. with. Let's call Bob Ryan right now, and you listen to Bob Ryan when Bob Ryan says that uh, Yaz was a compiler. Tim Duncan. At Levitard Show on Twitter is where is where you reach us. I am so confused. We are all over the place all right. right now. I do have the polls. It's Marshall's if you fault. Want to go I got to be honest. Okay. I got to be transparent about this. It's uh, it's executives at ESPN actively playing defense against the good content of this show by merely arriving. It's a terrible frustration. <laughs> Should Ripken have gone to nineteen straight All Star games? No, that's much. Get that's out a of bit here. much. Let me check the stats on this guy. Ripken was a little bit overrated, man. He was indeed. Oh, yep. come on. No, no, Dan, he really was. I mean, I had to take a night off. Selfish. <laughs> was it Chanho Park that just grooved oh, that yeah. pitch to him in the yeah, All-Star yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep. You okay, Greg? What's going yeah, on with yeah. the cough, Greg? Greg, Greg. I could be dying here and Greg, you're, 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 Greg, you're criticizing I think we're the past the could be points. Like the cough has been here for three weeks. You don't have a cough button. It's amateur radio right. of the highest order. Get me you, a cough button. You've gotten a bunch of prescriptions. You, sound, fine. You, you you keep saying you're fine for weeks while coughing on the air every time you laugh. Now, you're a good sight better than you were when you made these noises. <laughs> Gurgling up from your soul, from the depths of, of hell. <laughs> Um, I mean, 276 career hitter, 92 season, a complete joke. Kobe Bryant. Oh. Wait, what? Three decades. Oh, I thought you were going compiler on Kobe Bryant. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, come on. Yeah. I mean, the shoe fits. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> when in Rome. I mean, How dare you guys blaspheme against. If it walks like a duck. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, Mike Ryan is feverishly calling Bob Ryan right now. As we uh, take ESPN into its digital future by having Bob Ryan and Greg Cody argue about whether or not Yaz was a compiler, it's the yeah. future. Of, <laughs> it's, it's the future of radio and television. Yeah. Signed off by the highest powers at the network. I'm sitting in the middle of everything. I, yeah. I can't there it get is. over Ripkin, man. Ripkin's a compiler. All right, seven eighty-eight right. career All OPS. Right. He had four years over a hundred RBIs. He played for fifty. Bob Ryan, you are the gatekeeper on all things baseball. I don't believe Greg Cody deserves a Hall of Fame vote. He does things on the internet and <laughs> no, like that's how he just looks up a couple numbers on the internet and uh, asks his, he's the fourth most knowledgeable member of his family when it comes to baseball. And so we were telling him that you, the authority on these things had said, agreed with Guillermo, even though Billy's an idiot, agreed with Guillermo that Yaz could be accused of being a bit of a compiler. And so I'd like for you and Greg Cody mm -hmm. to discuss this, please. He, he is a bit of. I, I was uh, marshalling my argument in advance there. Um, he certainly uh, is a achiever uh, who accumulated his 3,400-plus hits and his 400-plus home runs over a very long period of time, uh, 23 years, as a matter of fact. Debuted in 61 um, and had his last at bat in 83. The interesting thing about Yaz, uh, and, and numerically, is that he, he hit 266 as a rookie and 266 as a 44-year-old. As a, uh, 40, if I'm, I'm pretty certain of those numbers. Check them out. Regardless. Um, he uh, is a was belongs in the Hall of Fame. Uh, if if there's if to last for 23 years, and in the last of those 23 years, in the final week, and this is a this is verifiable, in the final week of those 23 years, he was taking extra batting practice because he wanted to retire, having it said that they could still not throw a fastball by him, and they couldn't. Um, think about it. He's 44, and he was a viable player on a, uh, in, a, in the major leagues. Uh, and so, yes, he, he, he absolutely. Okay. This is terrible. Game. This is terrible because I don't feel like you guys are arguing. And now you're going from saying, Bob, that he was indeed a compiler to saying he's also a Hall of Famer. Bob, Hall you have an answer. be both. Wait a minute. Hold no, it. No, That's no, part, no. We can't get part of his resume is that, but, but the fact is, I don't know how many gold gloves count them. Eight, nine, who knows? Eight. Um, okay. Gold gloves and. Uh, not not for nothing was he uh, nicknamed the captain. Bob, he's a compiler. And, uh, not for nothing, no. he's nicknamed. He's a compiler. Let's just say it and let's have the discussion instead of talking around it. Seven gold gloves, three batting titles, 
Exactly. Where Three are you? Bob, Who's with you? Bob, where Who's are you? you? Where are you? All right. No, but when I'm, when I'm, I, I already told you, your producer I'm having lunch with, with, uh, with, with a distinguished baseball mind and historian of your acquaintance, Gordon Eads, okay? Well, put him on the phone. We'll put him on the phone. All right. We will. Hello. <laughs> Dan Levitard. Hello, Gordon Eads. <laughs> How are you? Uh, excellent. I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch. Where are you guys lunching? <laughs> Uh, we're lunching at Game On, which is right around the corner from Fenway Park. That's nice. wonderful. Of, of course, course you are. Right. So you're the perfect people to come to. I was scared of Gordon Ease as a beat writer when I was young because he had scouts in his wedding and he had all sorts of sources. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have any sources. I was just running around terrified. Gordon Ease, Carl Yastrzemski. You're on the air, by the way. I think somebody should have probably told you that. Carl Yastrzemski, probably. compiler, yes or no? You're a national baseball fo- voice of big repute. By the way, uh, Ryan was correct. 266 as a rookie, 266 in his final season. Yeah, he was a compiler. He, had, he played 23 seasons, but uh, he also is indisputably, in my mind, a Hall of Famer. How can, uh, you, how can you be both? Cody, more yeah. aggressive. Well, you, Sports you radio's can, more aggressive. You can, compile, you can compile great numbers over, over years and still have I – mean, we're talking about a guy who was an 18-time All-Star. Right. Seven gold gloves. Uh, had arguably the greatest single season ever in 1967 when he won the Triple Crown and in the last two weeks of Greg. the season hit over 500. Trying to get a word in edgewise here. Eight, seven for eight on the last week of the season. Go for it. Bob, isn't it true that... Bob, we're not talking about Bob Gordon. anymore. I thought they were both on the phone. Just get, thank you, Bob. Bob's Gordon. in the room. Thank you. I, you thank guys, you. Two you minutes. Gordon, can we say thank you? It's with Ipswich Two plans. minutes. What are you guys out, eating? Out. Get out of here. Gordon, can like I say this? Unbelievable. Get out of here. Full Gordon, can I say this? That Yaz is overrated. Can I say no, that? No, let's go. Done. Done with segment. Red Sox full, Nation was founded by the 67 full, Red Sox. Full blown, or false? Full blown senility has broken out on the air. From Greg Cody. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, for the love of God. Dumb fight. <laughs> what is I happening fine. here, man? I, 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 well. I backed away from the mic so nobody would pick up my call. Get out of here. What a joke Ripken is. He really is, but not yes. Get out of here. I ain't got time to bleed. Marshall, you get in there with it. Gordie Howe, All Star, five you're different terrible. decades. You're terrible. Five it's... different decades, Gordie Howe. Don Lebatard. My father has turned on everyone in the organization. Everyone. He wow. has turned the Miami Heat into something he loves and hates. He's blaming everybody. Stugatz. Well, it started with all, all that air and the bags of chips. You know, if the Heat would have taken care of that, he'd have fallen in line. Mickey Aaron chips. Exactly. What? Yeah. What? It's cold, man. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. We run a bit of a loose ship around here, so can someone please tell uh, my father, while the highest-ranking executive at ESPN is here, that to not take his shirt off and... Because <laughs> he's going to not. No, I'm like, just, like no but cares. somebody needs to tell him okay. because we don't need the problems to come. Right. My father every, every day is like sneaking into a corner to take his shirt off so that he can change clothes. There's a place for him to do it. He doesn't want to do it because he's an old man. He doesn't listen to me. Is telling him really going to help? No. Well, but <laughs> just, just well, then somebody tackle him. Okay. Somebody tackle him so he doesn't do anything. <laughs> Stugatz has declared this a top five weirdest show uh, we've ever done, and he says it didn't become that until 12.15. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a weird show, a rare show where from I would say ten to twelve fifteen, it was one of the top ten shows we have ever done, and then twelve fifteen till right now, the weirdest show we've ever done. It rained right yes. into a ditch. Yep. It's these damn executives always getting in the way of everything <laughs> we're trying to do around here. Like we were doing such a good show, it was so much fun. Listen to how much fun it was a little while ago at Levitard Show. We absolutely tighten up and get tense when the executive. I, no, I do. It's not all of you. You're totally yourself. I'm going to you with Kellen Winslow questions. You're the least qualified person in the history of the company to discuss anything of that depth. <laughs> Thank you. Has John Bowles ever told a lie? No, oh, for the love of God. That's when we were doing a good show, <laughs> man. Yeah, that's, 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 those are the kind of questions yes, you can ask me. Yeah, yep. uh, 57% of the audience said yes. He's told a lie. Is there an ice shortage in Europe? <laughs> 60% of the audience said yes. Is it worse to Jimmy or Josh a person? 
I'm telling you, man. Good show. It was. You'll it see was, when it, it goes. It was frolicking yeah. along. Sixty-two <laughs> percent of the audience said Jimmy was Claudel Washington, the last Claudel. <laughs> We're not making Claudels anymore. Eighty-seven percent of the audience said yes. Were you terrified of Troy Percival? <laughs> oh my God, that was such a fun time oh, yeah. in our show. Nineties oh, yeah. baseball we yeah. were doing. Nelsie on minutes. Yeah. 52% of the audience said yes. Has there ever been more than just one person named John Jaha? <laughs> what a show we What had a show we oh. were doing. Like We were <laughs> soaring into the sky yeah. before the executives got in the way. 88% of the audience said no. <laughs> Can you ever say blouser without saying Lemke? <laughs> Oh, we, were, we were a rocket ship. Oh, we days. were a rocket ship. Oh, my God. What do we do? 67% oh, of the audience oh, said, no, you oh, can't do it. Oh, we, it's Mark at Marsha. Oh, okay. Has there ever been a Bob? B-O-B-B. <laughs> Has there been? Never. 72% of the audience said, no. At 80, uh, I'm sorry, are 81-year-olds texting and emailing? That's a good question. It is. Because, we, oh yeah, because we're talking about Clint Eastwood. Yes. Murray! I uh, I told the Whopper that Murray had sent me a text. I don't even know Murray or not Murray. I don't know anything. He hasn't sent me anything is the point. Lied for no reason. I don't Murray! know why. Murray! You I often that. do Weird. for no Weird. reason. Uh, 63% of the audience said no. If Harold Baines looked like a dad, did er- uh, Eddie Murray look like a granddad? 88% of the audience said yes. It's an important one. Those are the polls. Excellent work by mm-hmm. you guys today. Good yep. polls. At Levitard Show. Mm-hmm. 90s baseball. We finally found even a wheelhouse for Greg Cody. What is it that we liked so much about that? <laughs> well, you know, I was, that was the tail end of me uh, being fast. This was the Dan Levitard Show on ESPN Radio. We live in a racist country.